Welcome, Sastri Akal, to the Love, Laugh, Live chat show with myself and Dav Ubi. So, Pyaar Kara Haso Te Jug Jug Diyo Wala Show. So, this show is about how to love with passion, how to love with pleasure, and how to live with peace. So, what does this mean? Eda Matlu Hega, Pyaar Karo Sare Dil Dina, Haso Dil Parke Ta Jiyo Shant Dina. So my name is Dwinda Ruby, I'm a life and spiritual coach and sitting next to me my beautiful, funny co-host. And my name is Gadya Garcha and I'm an empowerment and resilience coach. So Dav, we are going to continue on with our topic from last week. Yes, so we, we mentioned last week that we are going to do about three or four episodes on the topic about vibration. So today is the second episode. So how many times do we hear you know how important it is to raise your vibration including thinking positive and uplifting thoughts so what we are going to discuss in depth what actually vibration is and uh, so once we fully understand it I'm sorry, so much better, you know, vibration kia, then we realize that we are the creators of our own reality and responsible for what's attracting all our experiences that are in alignment of the frequency that we are emitting. So there we go. That's the start of the conversation. So there we are. We are not just flesh and blood. If you put anything under an intense microscope, you can ultimately see that everything vibrates and is constantly moving. So at our core, we are vibrational beings. So now we will explain why we are vibrational beings. There is actually scientific proof that humans are not physically physical beings and in fact nothing in our universe is physical or solid. And we know that's difficult to get your head around but it's the truth. The human being is comprised of nine systems and these are circulatory system, the digestive system, the endocrine system, the muscular system, nervous system, reproductive system, res respiratory system, <laughs> skeletal system, and the urinary system. So what, Dav, makes these systems? Can you explain it further, please? So that's in the body that we're aware of consciously, we, that we think we can touch and you know, feel and, and we can see with our eyes. So well, I'm going to go even more in deeper of what is all this systems are made of. So the first thing these systems are made of is tissues and organs. Okay? Mm. So now, what are these tissues and organs made of? She's going to tell us. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Cells. So what makes the cells? <laughs> I thought you know the answer by now. <laughs> I do know the answer, but I'm just going to let oh, you, you let me do enjoy it. Okay. the moment. Enjoy the moment. So these cells are made of molecules. Okay, we're not trying to make this like a serious, serious science. <laughs> you know, let's like have might a school feel like biology. That. <laughs> okay, so what are these molecules made of? Okay, so the molecules are made of atoms. This is all this we're talking about, Sadhguru with you. Okay, so what are these atoms made of? Subatomic particles, right? So what are the subatomic particles made of? So they're made up of protons, photons and neutrons and electrons. So the first three, the, the protons, photons and neutrons, they're actually made of quirks and the electrons are made out of leptons. It's going deep, isn't it? So, so what is quirks and leptons made of? Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Energy. This is what we're talking about. Sade under it. Table the it. Sade passe. It's made of this energy. Another word for this energy is the nothingness. It's made of nothing. So, um, Gurdjieff is going to say, what is this nothing then? Thank you for that great example. Um, I'd, be, I'd be a good biology teacher. Yeah, you science would be, because yeah. it went straight over my head. <laughs> So what is this energy, you might be asking, because obviously it's a big, big question that we're all wondering, well, what does it mean? So what we understand it to be and what scientists have understood it to be as well is that it's God, 
it's omnipresent. It's the force, there's the energy, it's formless, eternal being, it's love, unconditional love. It has no beginning, it has no end, it's non-judgmental. It's the creator, what we might call Rab. It's the I am, it's the divine consciousness or the higher consciousness. It's without fear or hate. So this is what this nothingness is inside everything and all of us. It exists in everything, even in the air, the fire, the water, in our thoughts, in our actions, our feelings, in, even in our illnesses, in the darkness, even the person that triggers you, the saint or the sinner, the trees, nature, murderers, tyrants. There is no place that this nothingness or energy or all of those other examples, I've got to fly here, <laughs> that doesn't exist. It Sorry about that. It exists in the flight. <laughs> so, this is what we are going to talk about, this vibration, this energy. <laughs> There's two now. <laughs> Sorry about this. Anyway, so this is what this energy is, the nothingness. There's no beginning and no end. And even though, like, you know, just going on a little bit more about this, we think that when we die, that's it. You know, the body just dies, but the energy that's within the body it just continues, it never dies away. It's always there. And it's, so. you know, when you mentioned all those, like, this nothingness, but this nothingness is still everything. Mm. The word omnipresent, it's that stillness, it's the rab that we don't see with physical eyes because it is this formless energy, this vibration, this vibration, the gar gar there, or vibration, as it getting it up there, or or sad the under there, and see scientifically it's been proven now. So having that knowing isn't it a wonderful mm. thing? I see the most I saw that up get there, we thinking I want to connect with Rab, but Rab goes, how can you connect with me? Because oh, he did it up there under vasta. You can't connect, I'm always, I am you and you are me. Yeah, and, and I think the most beautiful part of this is sometimes, um, you know, when we talk to each other or we talk, I mean, you know, I know I've mentioned in the past, when we say, I want to connect with God and I want to do this and, and we don't understand how powerful we are as human beings and we always think that we're separate from everything and anything yeah. and this just goes to show that none of us are separate, we're all connected and, and it's, it's just such a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And for me, out of all of these programs, that's what makes me feel really, really good inside. Yeah, just I think I'd share that. the biggest fear up in human species have that fear of being alone, fear of being separated, fear of being rejected. And this is, when we're talking about vibration, the law of vibration, it's saying that there's no such thing as separateness, that you know, the, from the tree, to the sun, to the moon, to the ocean, to this table, to us, that same vibration, same, exists in everyone, in everything. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean, there can never be separation. Just having that, any soji awareness, Arjuna, they realize that, mm -hmm. I am, that same energy is me in the ocean, is me in the tree. It's just me all the yeah. time. It's, it's so just beautiful. kind of, understanding yeah. it and getting your head around it so um so we hope you enjoyed that explanation deep explanation but we're going to go even deeper than that so that means that at the fundamental core of the atom and therefore the fundamental core of everything in our universe there is no material it is just pure energy you me everything is energy in other words nothingness Energy is only transformed. It is neither created or destroyed. So this energy that is you and me, and that is everything, persists forever. It is immortal. So we are really immortal. You know, the only thing that we think that ends is probably this Sri, you know, this is temporary. But it is such a that we are this vibration being. It's always been, there hasn't been a beginning or an ending, it's just existing forever. And that's so beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. And just talking about it, it makes you feel so good. Yeah. So, 
So this means that you are not just temporary, this flesh sack that we mean by this shri, this skin, uh, that lives for 80 years, that dies forever. Now you are the same energy that is as in, in all our universe. So this means that humans are purely eternal spiritual beings. So a little quote here from Albert Einstein that everything is energy, that's, that's all there is to know. Right? Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. So it can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is physics. So what we're trying to say here that whatever we're thinking or whatever we're focusing on, that energy, that whatever that frequency is what we end up experiencing in this outer world, this stage we're on in this planet. Huh? So that's how powerful uh, we are as vibrational beings. So we call ourselves human species, but actually we are vibrational beings. Mm. That's what we want to uh, refer ourselves to. So we're continuing on from our first show. So we're going to go into a bit more depth and you know, bring you different um, uh, parts of the vibrational beings that we are. So I'm just going to read a little bit. So imagine the universe as a vast orchestra with each element playing its unique note. Your desires are like the melodies that you wish to hear within the symphony. To manifest them, you must learn to attune your own vibrations to resonate with the frequencies of your desires. The journey begins with a clear and focused intention. So your intentions are like the conductor's baton directing the flow of energy within the cosmic symphony. So when you set a powerful intention, you're in essentially stating your desires to the universe and setting the stage for their manifestation. So what does this mean? So what we're saying is that, that everything and everyone, we're like instruments within a, um, a, an amazingly beautiful symphony and we're all vibrating at different frequencies. And we're gonna talk more about that, but, but that's what we're doing essentially right from the beginning. Yeah. As soon as we come into this human form, you know, that's what we're emitting. We're, we're like those big electric towers and we're, we're emitting an energy, whether it's positive, negative, or whatever that energy is. And we're gonna talk about it even more. Um, that is who we are. At our essential core, that is we, who we are, the nothingness, the God, the omnipresent of yeah. uh, what we so, are. Yeah, so that, what you just, that passage you just read out. Uh, so think about the symphony, the orchestra. So, the, like it says, we're all like different instruments. Mm. So let's like, say you're the bhaja, <laughs> She's the bhajani. <laughs> and uh, we all got our own music to follow, mm. but if your bhaja is out of tune, <laughs> right, because you Your chemta is out of tune. <laughs> And you are vibrating at a very... She's jumping up yeah. here somewhere. <laughs> You're vibrating at a different frequency, and I'm vibrating at a different frequency. Let's say, um, okay, you're at a lower frequency because it's... Oh, I'm at a higher frequency. <laughs> She's well, at the lower frequency. That depends on um, what kind of music it is. So if it's like, like one of those, what do you call those, really hard rock, and I'm going from like... <laughs> she doesn't like that. And I mean, there's beautiful angelic harp music, but a different frequency. So people around us are going to get a different experience yeah. of what kind of music we're playing. That's the beauty of life, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Everybody's vibrating at a different frequency. Some people are going to love the harp, the calmness and all that. And some people are going to love the heavy metal. But yeah. That's just an example of the symphony. Yeah, but if we're in the same orchestra, it wouldn't be it in wouldn't alignment. Work. It won't sound nice. Yeah, it wouldn't it work. It would sound awful. It would be chaos, and it won't sound, you know, angelic enough. And so, but who people who are attracted to heavy hard, metal, heavy metal, you know, so they would resonate and be in alignment with you. And people with the harp, they'll resonate with that. But but the heavy metal and the harp wouldn't go together. So we will repel. We can have a try. <laughs> fusion. Yeah. Fusion. And the bhajan and the heart fusion. <laughs> yeah, I know. So that's, I mean, it's a funny example, but I hope you get the gist that it's all about, you know, music, sound, the frequency. 
it has to be in alignment, it has to match in order to really sound so beautiful and have a beautiful experience in life and what we attract. So like attracts like, so we will attract whatever we are playing, what frequency we are emitting. So we attract Holger, mm. that's what we're trying to say really. Yeah, yeah. So, so I hope you enjoyed that analogy. <laughs> I think it was very unique. It was, yeah. Uh, that came out of nowhere, but it was good, wasn't it? Yeah. So however, Intention alone is not enough. So your intentions must be pure, heartfelt and aligned with your true self. If you harbour doubt or conflicting desires, it is like having an out of tune instrument, okay? So in your orchestra, it disrupts the harmony of the music. Thus, it is essential to cultivate clarity and authentic in your authenticity <laughs> in your intentions <laughs> right so what we're trying to say there okay the intentions are so important like let's say um uh what, what example did i give earlier on so it's just about having a hidden agenda yeah isn't yeah it? no we, we, how are we trying to explain this we're trying so hard to make it sound so simple because Talking about it here still sounds quite complicated. So intention means that did that, let's say I want to um, feel abundant, want to feel rich, that I want to earn a lot of money. But in your account, you've got no money. Yeah, but my intention, you know, I might be saying I'm a rich and wealthy person, I'm deserving, but under intention that you really feel like I don't have enough, I'm poor. And I'm not, I'm not worthy. Of, I'm not worthy. Yeah. So, and so you've got a different belief that you believe more than the actual wanting to experience the abundance. So really, uh, what we're trying to say that what, what we really believe, that is true, that's a true intention. Oh, he then we're, that's what we're emitting, that energy, that vibration. So no matter how much we say we want to be rich, but we still find ourselves that we don't have enough money because deep inside our intentions is about one feeling the lack, feeling not, not enough. enough feeling poor, you know, and the absence of something. So what we're trying to say here that if you want to attract something, a relationship, money, health, so you've got an intention that is coming from a pure place that is in alignment of your what you want to uh, attract. So you've got to really start believing that I am rich. And the only way you can do that is start focusing on in your life where you do have things to be grateful for, like, I do have a, a roof over my head, I do have enough to buy food. So you've got to stop putting your attention of not having enough in the, in the scarcity mindset and be in the place that I've got so much yet to be grateful for. I've got, at least I've got a pound on my pocket I still give to a homeless person because I can't be that living in a place of poverty or scarcity. So your intentions have to be pure and not have a hidden agenda. Um, Oh, oh the, another example I was saying earlier on was like um, if you're trying to really help somebody, if you really want to go out there and be really useful to that person. Selfless. Yeah, selfless. But then you have a hidden agenda that I actually don't love myself enough and I want to be liked by other people. I actually want to be, I'm, I'm afraid of being alone. But the only reason I'm helping someone because I want them to love me because I don't know how to, you you don't think you're worthy of being loved yourself. So you want somebody else to love you and like you. So you being a people pleaser, you have this you might come across in your actions that I'm being a really kind, generous person. I'm going out my way, you know, neglecting my needs, I'm gonna do take your needs as my priority. But your hidden agenda really is, which is not coming from pure intentions, your service, is because I don't, I don't love myself enough. I want something of you to make me feel special. Better as well. I want you to reciprocate that and make me feel good because I don't know how to make myself feel good. That's what's, what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that hidden agenda is actually what the monkey, that is hidden agenda is actually what we end up attracting. Yeah. That's why you get disappointed because Anna Zukoshish Karki going out of way to you know doing so much for that person, they don't appreciate it. They won't they will actually probably not even say thank you or probably just ignore you, whatever, and then you get hurt and you get offended, you get upset. 
So then you're going into a low vibration. Yeah, then you're low vibration. You're already in a low vibration mm. because the hidden agenda is not coming from a yeah, high vibration. Yeah. But you're it's already going to go low. even lower. You're already low. So they will sh for show back to you that they on the same frequency of vibration you're saying that, but this is what you're really emitting. Mm. Mm. Probably that's very a better way. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking it's about. It's a very interesting yeah, way of looking at it. Hidden agenda and... So yeah, so uh, going on, car carrying on, one of the fundamental laws of the universe is the law of vibration. This law states that everything vibrates at a specific frequency and like attracts like. This means when you align your vibrations with the frequency of your desires, you begin to draw them closer to you. So for instance, I mean, we discussed this earlier, if you're the sort of person that complains, you get upset, you get angry. So that's the frequency you're giving out. So basically you're sending that out into the universe. So what you're gonna get back, you're just gonna get the same. You, you can't be um, a negative person, say negative things and then expect positive things to come towards you because that just, it, it just doesn't work. Um, so, you know, your mindset is that I'm not happy, you know, I'm not happy with the way the world works, I'm not happy with this person or this situation. So you're constantly sending those, um, the frequency within your body, the vibration that you're vibrating at, that's what you're sending out. Yeah. And so therefore, because even if you're trying on the surface be, to show that you're a really happy person, but inside you're like, well, I'm not happy really because I'm complaining about this, this and this. So then that will come back to you. Yeah. In the simplest form, that's that's what we're talking yeah. about. So if you got people who like to complain, and high consciousness, Rabbi, what you want to say, it will start giving you more things to complain about. Yeah, because remember, God is um, no fear, no hate. Yeah, and it's not judgment. And it's all. endless. Yeah, and so this God, this nothingness, this energy, it will just will give you back in the same frequency you're emitting. Yeah. So if you're in a place that to see Shukranaka, then you are grateful for everything, and then that energy, that nothingness, will say, "I'll give you more things to be grateful for." And and we're not talking about material things. So this is about the energy. So if you can imagine, I mean, I know I'm going off track a tiny bit, but when you go to third world countries, those people might not have anything compared to you, but yet their smiles are brighter. Mm. They're happier people. They're, they're, they are vibrating so high yeah. that we can't even understand it because we're thinking we've got all these things yet we're nowhere near as happy as these people yeah. because they're coming from a place of gratefulness. They're coming from a place of authenticity. They know, and they're not wanting things that yeah. are, are, are not something that they can afford or anything, but they're just generally mm. happy because they're probably thinking, well, I've got my health, I've got a roof over my head and I've got water and something to eat. So they're not thinking beyond that. They're just satisfied yeah, in what and they have and content. And we people who think they have more materialistic things are always looking for the next thing to, yeah. you know, make them feel more, I suppose, just alive and comparison. I want, mm. I've got more as competition mindset, don't I? Yeah. And so, you're comparing yourself to other people as well. Yeah. So that's a that's a negative mindset yeah. and a low vibration. Yeah, yeah. When you're looking at yourself and you're comparing yourself to your neighbour. Yeah. Whereas I suppose in Africa majority of people in the village are all poor. Yeah. They're all the status is the same for everybody. Yeah. So they don't have that comparison coming into their life. I think having a simple life is the most empowering way to live. Keep mm. everything simple, yeah. and you realize that actually you are abundant, you mm. are richer than anybody else, you know. And like you said, um, what things you cannot buy, that's where the real wealth lies. Yeah. What you can't buy, that's where the real wealth is. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm going to carry on reading the next bit. So, imagine your desire, abundance in your life, to manifest this abundance, you have to cultivate thoughts, emotions, and actions that vibrate at the frequency of abundance. Positive thoughts, gratitude and acts of generosity are like tuning your instrument to play the abundance melody. As your vibrations align with abundance, you naturally attract more of it into your life. So again, it's um, if I want to attract more, let's say, abundance, money, pesa into my life, uh, so I have to be in the same frequency of feeling rich and feeling fulfilled financially you know uh, just freedom there so if but if i'm 
if I'm not vibrating from that frequency and I'm actually thinking, no, I actually feel my reality, I don't have enough, you know, if I do have enough money, it's gone just like that, or it's, I don't know, money is actually the, the root cause of evil. If you have that sort of belief that you can't trust them, if that's what you believe, but then you want to attract more money, it, you, you won't get it. It's just because you're not in, the, in alignment of what you want to attract. So what we're trying to say here that you've got to be in that place. As though you've already got it. you already got it, but you've got to not be contradicting like inside, deep in your subconscious uh, in your inner belief that you have this thing, actually I feel money's hard to get, but then you want to uh, attract money it won't work. So you got to come in a place where you got to, either through meditation, or whatever, affirmation, visualization, you got to feel like already I'm rich and abundant. Money comes to me easily. Then you attract it. You got to be in the right frequency in order to attract it. So let's say if you, uh, you're thinking you're rich. Let's say I'm really rich, I'm a wealthy woman, but then I go to the coffee shop and I think, oh, they said, oh, end up buying the cheapest one, why would I buy the cheapest one? Because deep inside you still believe, no, I, I want to save money here, mm. I'd rather get the cheaper one, why buy the expensive one, the cheaper one? Well, I can't one? afford. Or, or you can say I yeah. can't afford, or you're trying to, still trying to save, thinking oh, I'd rather save this much because I don't want to waste money just buying this. But no, did it, if you think about rich people, um, there's a lot of rich people, they, um, because they've already been programmed, they, they, why do rich people come richer and poor people remain poor? Because rich people have this uh, mindset or beliefs, or programs, where they're already feeling abundant all the time, they feel rich all the time, that's why they attract more wealth into their life. Mm -hmm. That's how this happens, this is how the energy, the vibration works. Because they'll feel rich, they wake up feeling rich, they go to sleep feeling rich and they attract more wealth into their life. But people who wake up poor, they go to sleep poor, it's hard for them to attract wealth because they're emitting different energy frequency. Mm. Yeah, so, so this is probably why the world is the way it is on a simpler term, you know. You know, if you feel rich, then obviously more people are going to open more doors to you, aren't they? Aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're going to look poor and act poor and stuff like that, then people wouldn't see you as an investment. Yeah. That's yeah. that's the way I look at it. Anyway. <laughs> so going on to the next part, emotions are a powerful aspect of your vibrational field. They act as the emotional resonance behind your intentions. When your emotions are aligned with your desires, they send out powerful vibrational signals to the universe. So again, if we go to back to the abundance situation that you mentioned. It's the feeling, it's the feeling of feeling as though you've got money. It doesn't mean you're going to go out and be, you know, silly and spend all your money or anything like that. But it's that feeling, well, how would I feel if I did have a surplus amount of money in my account? I have the, the most beautiful car, I have the nicest clothes. It's just imagining it and feeling it. So that's what you're emitting. You're not sort of wearing nice clothes, but inside feeling like a pauper. Or well, you're feeling like you're really, really built. Um, poor or, oh my God, I've got my credit cards coming through now, you know, I've spent so much money, because that's in misalignment. It's how you're feeling on the inside. And say, for instance, somebody said, um, you know, if you've got five pounds, I, I've lost my purse and stuff like that. You wouldn't think, well, I haven't got any money. How can I give it? Even though you've, you have got some money, because you're coming from a place that's as though you're poor. So, but you, you give it willingly, knowing that, you know what, Money just comes to me. It's not that big a deal. It, it just happens. Yeah. And it's like I said, it's just these beliefs about money. It's something, it's a little Because money is energy as well. Yeah, everything's and energy. That's what we Even forget. money's energy. Even money. Yeah. Uh, everything's consciousness. So energy is all alive. So even you can have a good relationship with money, you can say to money, I respect you. I respect you because you something, you are energy. You're made of the same. You know, the ants, <coughs> you know, when we talk about all these subatomic particles, it exists everywhere. You know, so there's nothingness exists in everything. So it's just the meaning we put on money, and this meaning is probably is something we've, a belief we adapted when we were young, when we saw money wasn't easy, we saw our parents struggling, and our parents must have said, you have to work hard in order to Don't earn some money. Don't waste money. Don't waste money. Or we see 
people that who are wealthy, they think they're not nice people, people, rich people don't respect you. It's something that we put meaning onto the money, making money look something it's hard to, you know, hard to attract. Money is not for nice people, money for those people uh, for, who use you, all these different examples. But it's just the meaning we put onto it. So if we change our relationship, because if that same energy exists in a person, in an animal, in the environment, that same energy exists in money. So even then, we also give the, the love and respect to the money. Just as Lakshmi no respect Kardeya, you respect that with the money as well. So that's why all this puja Kardeya, mm. so it's because it's the same energy. So instead of thinking, anim, um, like you say to a person that's so hard to me be loved by that person. So for me to be loved by that person, I have to be that love. Myself. Lo my loving energy, I've got to be emitting that sort of frequency or love. So I've got to feel that love in me first. I become that loving energy, then I'll track that loving relationship into because I'll track something on a similar vibe. So same with money. So I've got to feel I am the money. I am money myself. The same way I am abundant, I am rich and wealthy, and I respect this state I'm in. And then I track the same wealth because if we're thinking, Oh, I've got to pay for that bill. I don't know if I can do it this month. Probably I'll claim in there. I can, you know, am I able to get away with it? Or I, I better not pay for this now. I'll pay for the, you know, this installments, whatever. So we're always thinking about not enough. Mm. And not enough is something that we feel we're not enough. When we'd forgotten our greatness, we've forgotten that we are extensions of this incredible, powerful, magnificent energy of the nothingness. How can that not be not enough when it's everything? The omnipresent can never relate to the words of not enough. So when we start saying we are enough or we value ourselves, then we're in the same frequency of attracting that, the money and the wealth and be financially free. Um, that's how it works. It all comes down to the, the vibrations we are emitting from what we believe about ourselves and the relationship to the world. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I talked about the love thing. So yeah, consider the emotion of love. It is one of the highest vibrational frequency and is often associated with the feelings of joy, mm. compassion and gratitude. And when you infuse your desires with the energy of love, joy, you elevate the vibrational frequency, making them more magnetic and attractive to the universe. And we know what that means because we're doing it all the time. Because when we're doing it to a place of excitement and when we're passionate, like we, this is very passionate about all this, what we share with you because we're learning at the same time. And we just think that, oh God, this wisdom, it is so, I don't know, it's such an eye opener. It's quite powerful as it's well. It's very powerful. So. <coughs> When we get excited, that we know that our vibration starts to rise because all of a sudden we say feel energized and we feel some jhana in the air all of a sudden, and then in that place and the high vibration brings joy and compassion. We attract things very quickly. It comes to us quicker than it would because it's faster. So in a high vibration, it's very fast the frequency. So then we attract it faster. It literally. It retract it as soon as we you know, give it attention without feeling the lack of it, without the feeling the fear or the doubt. Any of those frequencies, if they don't interfere with us or resistance of it, then we attract it very quickly. And because we speak it into existence. Yeah, and this is like when you're sort of, you're feeling really good about something, just imagine it was a trip and you're going somewhere, you're already imagining yourself being there, you're imagining what you're going to buy and, you know, you feel quite rich just because you're going to experience something, even though it's not happened yet, but in your mind and in your, you, the emotions that you're emitting, it's, it's, it's like going on a trip, like I said, but it's that feeling of, you know, oh my God, we're going to have a great time, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And that's what happens. So within the Love, Laugh, Live, you know, the program that we do, this is what we want to share with everybody because, you know, for us doing this, this is abundance for us to be able to sit here, talk about what we love and what we enjoy, talking about vibrations, you know, about love and about laughter. Bringing those things together, it's just 
it's just really, really magical. And, and we know that people understand it because when you sit together with somebody who's very loving and somebody who's got sense, good sense of humor, naturally you will mm. feel good. Mm. And you can't ignore that because that's the reality of the situation. So I'm gonna go on to talk about, um, it is important that negative emotions such as fear, Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Doubt. <laughs> and anger. <laughs> We're definitely not feeling that okay, anger. Sorry about oh, this. <laughs> I'd lost where I was and was shaped. Such as fear, doubt, and anger it can lower your vibe. <laughs> sorry. You can, can lower your vibrational frequency and hinder your manifestations. Thus, thus, it is crucial to cultivate emotional awareness and choose emotions that align with your desires. So be aware of your feelings, your actions, your thoughts, your behavior, everything that you're emitting, whatever you're sending out, be more mindful of it because sometimes, you know, we're very good at acting. You know, we wear different masks in different situations. We do it so easily, we don't realize that we, we're doing it, but then we wonder why life isn't as easy as it could be, because in reality, we're not really being authentic because what we're thinking inside is different to how we're displaying ourselves on the outside. So if, we, if I want to come from a place of love, joy, happiness, then I've got to feel it within me first. For, for other people to want to come towards me. That's, that's the way I can explain it. No, that's, that's now true. that I've seen where I'm on <laughs> But, you know, because when we get into laughter, when we feel in that place of joy and happiness, it's very contagious. So even though you started laughing, it's that contagious because it made me laugh because that all of a sudden the energy that we we're emitting then, this is how quickly, suddenly it happens. And, but if she was showing me anger now and resentment, I would certainly, <laughs> I would certainly feel something not good in myself because mm -hmm. that's the energy you're emitting. And I would have started to feel some element of sadness or fear. But that just happened naturally. You started laughing, I started laughing. That's, that was energy flowing from each other. This is how it works. So. Um, so if you're at home or anywhere in an environment at work and all of a sudden your energy frequency went into laughter, joke, whatever, and then you do emit that. And the person around you they could be feeling having a bad day, but you just you lifted up their energy, their mm. frequency. Mm. This is how I mean we're all doing something new again, no? But um I was just gonna say, yeah, and it works the other way as well. Yeah. Where you walk into a room and somebody's not in a good mood, yeah. they don't want to talk, they're feeling down and or they're upset or angry about this, and then you've gone in and even if you might be slightly higher, you might bring your energy down to match with their energy. Because again, it's always a choice. You might decide, well actually I don't want to be part of that negative energy, so I'm gonna take myself away and yeah. go off somewhere else because I don't want to be part of that. It's always a conscious choice. Yeah, but the only energy, the only time the energy would go down, you, when you feel depleted. So let's say you're coming from a high vibration, okay? Um, let's say you you come into the room in a very high vibration. It, 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 she's full of all this high, you know. It's all true. <laughs> vibrational <laughs> frequency. She's emitting, and I'm probably feeling low. I'm feeling sad, or That's you know, I'm just feeling. Um, depressed or, or got anxiety and you come in right and because ma I'm already depleted that means and there any energy life force energy henigi have not been connected to the life force energy because I'm being given my attention to lower frequency so I'm actually my battery na kati hoya right so in order for me to feel good again I need to take it off something because I'm not connecting to just to, because that rubbed in our the life force energy because I'm not connecting there to fill myself up to recharge myself through meditation through meditation or, 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 or positive affirmations talks. yeah you know yeah. and so but you come in with a high frequency or this high vibrational energy and I'll do something I'll say something because not I won't know consciously but on a subconscious I'll do something to 
take it out of you. So I can feel, I might shout at you, I might say something horrible, and say, what are you laughing at? You know, yeah, what's yeah. so funny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, I feel really uplifted uh, in the sense, I feel energized. Because the moment you decided to feel low and feel offended and feel upset, the moment you feel anything uh, from love, the opposite of love, I've you, disconnected. You, no, you disconnected. You've just allowed yourself to deplete that high vibration. You've dropped and I've taken it off you. That's how it works. Mm. And I'm feeling slightly better, but you started to feel low. Mm. That's how the, the energy, the dynamics of it works. It's, it's really crazy. But Isn't it? it? But, it but, but I can totally understand it. But I'm doing it automatically on an unconscious level. Something has made me realize you with a high energy vibration. I need some of that in order to survive. It's all mm. about survival. And so I'll do something in my behavior just to deplete you. And I'm better battery charge, Ogi, and you're depleted, and you just want to leave. But if you didn't get offended and you're into that, you got that awareness, Soji, that I'm not going to allow myself to be triggered, I'm going to stay in my place of just being forgiving, compassionate towards me, then I'll still feel, I'll, I'll probably still feel slightly better, but you won't have to be depleted. Mm. That's yeah, how you've got to be conscious. Yeah. yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so that was a good one, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. That's a book, actually. <laughs> the book I'm giving you to read is called Celestin, Celestin Prophecy. And it's a, it talks, it's like a, a story version of it, that how it all plays out, that how we suck each other's energy yeah, from each as other. as vibrational beings. Yeah, even like from parents to children, even from plants, forget her. Um, that we're always constantly uh, needing energy of each other because energy what is what keeping us alive. I, I remember that experiment that um, somebody did where they got three glasses of water and they spoke to one with love. It was with two love. glasses of... Uh, no, it was three. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw three. It's not true It water. was three. It was th well, I think it's been done various times. Okay. So one glass was spoken with to, it had like a plant in it or something and it was spoken to really lovingly and it was like given attention and all those sort of things and then one glass was spoken to with real anger and you know frustration and shouted it and stuff and then there was one that just didn't get any attention at all but all of those three glasses um, over time maybe it was done over a month or six months the the color of the the water or the and the plant completely changed depending on how the energy was being exchanged yeah, yeah. so it was a, it's, it's a crazy experiment you can actually go onto YouTube and find it yeah. but it, it this is like the actual proof of how much impact we have on each other it did and then you should talk to your plants because it's all about energy it's vibration it's frequency so when you nurturing that plant with a lot of love and attention it does start to grow and yeah. thrive yeah. but when you are neglecting a plant and not giving it the love and attention and uh, the, also the plant does start to wither and die mm. so it's just saying that just you have the glass does it pani we pin there because pani is most of our tree is made out of water and even 70%. this planet yeah so when we bless the water and we give it that energy uh, actually, the the crystals right into the molecules dance. It, it, it looked like if it's loving words, it looked like little snowflakes. You know, they look like they look so pretty. But if you're like, you know, sipani pire, and then you're thinking about negative thoughts, and those crystals look like really dark, ugly little, you know, rock thing sort mm. of things. It just shows you through the microscope. You can see that, but it just shows you it's any power, it's shaktiya in uh, the things the. the the thoughts that we have, because all those are the vibration we're giving it. Mm. Amazing, isn't it? Absolutely yeah, yeah, amazing. definitely. So is it my turn now? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so what we were saying about visualization is a potent technique for harnessing vibration to manifest your desires. It involves using the power of your imagination to create vivid mental images of your desired outcomes. And when you visualize with intent and emotion, you send a clear message to the universe about what you want. So you close your eyes and imagine your desires as if they have already come to fruition. So see, feel and experience the joy, the satisfaction and gratitude as all of your desires are already here. So the practice not only raises your vibrational frequency, but it also strengthens your belief in the possibility of desires becoming tangible in your outer reality. 
So what we just, what I just read out here, uh, is about that. Whatever we want to manifest, whatever we want to experience in this, our reality, in our reality, but like it starts from here. We imagine it in here, mm. and we imagine it so vividly. The tiny little detail, like the environment, the smell, you know, what it'd be like to touch and everything, and we can put all that love into it. Uh, we will manifest that, become a tangible thing. Eventually, it's something that you can touch. It looks, uh, you can, you know, you can hold it, touch it, smell it. And this is the power of our imagination. So we're going to talk more about it in the next episode because that yeah. is quite... Um, it's quite deep. It's quite deep. So we're just going to go... I think we're coming to the end as well. So we're just mm -hmm. going to talk about um, the conclu conclusion of what we just shared in this um, episode, the second one. So everything in the universe is a state of vibration. From the subatomic particles to the stars, the planets in the sky, each vibration carries its own unique frequency and energy influencing the world around it. So in practical terms, this law suggests that our thoughts, emotions and intentions emit vibrations that resonate with similar frequency in the universe. So positive thoughts and emotions align with higher frequencies while negative ones correspond to lower vibrations. This law encourages us to become aware of the energy that we emit and the energy that we attract. Okay, so when we align our thoughts and emotions with higher vibrations, we become magnets for positive experiences and connection. And conversely, dwelling in, on negativity can draw more of the same into our lives. So the law of vibrations empowers us to take charge of our inner state as we are responsible totally, totally responsible for what we emit and therefore attract back into our lives. So in other words, what we give out is what we get back. Because the higher consciousness, God, doesn't understand, you know, he's not judgmental. So if you're giving out anger, complaining and all those kind of things, he's thinking, oh, okay, so I'm going to send that back to you. Uh, so that is what's going to come back to you in whichever form it will come but it will come because that's what you're saying that you're okay with that so it's just it's like a cycle it will just continue um, so your higher vibrations become a beacon of light uplifting and inspiring others to align with the desires and intention and intentions in this way you become an agent of positive change in the world so if you imagine you know, if you consciously want to be a more loving, kinder, caring person and be joy joyful, that's going to be that's going to be something that you're going to want from starting from the inside. And you've got to start making yourself happy, feel good about who you are at your core essence, and that is what you'll be sending out. And people will always think, oh, well, that certain person, you know, they always bring a smile to my face. They always make me feel uplifted. They always make me feel good about myself and things like that. And then you'll get that back. But if you're the person that doesn't feel good about themselves, but on the surface acts like everything's, you know, you're really happy about life and stuff like that, but inside you're not, life will show you the opposite of, what, of what's actually going on inside you. And this is where we think, well, why, why are these bad things happening to me? I'm such a kind, caring person. But the universe, the omnipresent, Rab, whatever you want to call it, this nothingness, that's not interested in your physical body or your f anything about your physicality. It knows what's actually going on inside you. Mm. And this is what it will align to. And, and the more that happens, that's kind of pushing you or forcing you to be aware of what's actually going on inside. Mm. Because the, the physical body, it doesn't matter because you're going to lose that one day anyway. But it's your frequency that you're emitting, that's what needs to be changed in order for you to be living a more happier, more high vibrational life. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, and uh, so I've started to say uh, that I'm not a human species, I'm actually a vibrational being. Now I understand that it's through everything, through our this nothingness, this vibration that we're emitting, that life is... is what we're attracting and what we're experiencing. So just remember we are vibrational beings. That's who we are to our core essence. And we're eternal and uh, there's no end. We just continuously, you know, death, is, death doesn't mean the end of us. It just means that we are transforming uh, into another, you know, form 
but there's no end to our journey. So, you know, just be more conscious, think about what it is that you'd like to admit and what you'd like to attract and work from the inside out, not from the outside in. Yeah. Um, so that's really important and we really look forward to you watching the rest of this series, which like we said, could be between uh, four to five episodes and yeah. I hope you really enjoy it and just continue to follow us on YouTube as well. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you.